What's up guys, welcome back to the iOS development channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this CocoaPod NV Activity Indicator View. It's really simple to use and I think you are going to love this CocoaPod. I use it in a lot of my production apps. All right, so you can get to this repo by typing that in or clicking the link in the description. Completely optional though, you don't really have to go here. I can just show you on the screen, but if you wanna head there, you can. Now, before we can really use this in a project, we have to install it with CocoaPods, right? And before we get into that, I'm just gonna tell you that I've opened up a new Xcode project completely blank, okay? So go ahead and create a new Xcode single view application. All right, now I have the terminal open because this is how we're gonna use CocoaPods. If you've never used CocoaPods before, you simply just have to run gem install CocoaPods and that will install CocoaPods on your computer. And then what we're gonna do after that, if you need to run that, is we need to add the CocoaPod to the project, okay? So what I've done is I've called this project NV Activity, right? And it's in this folder. And if I hit LS, you can see these projects in here. I'm gonna CD into NV Activity, which is the Xcode project that's open. That is completely empty. And I'm just gonna say pod init, all right? Now, if you run pod init, and this doesn't happen, right? If it doesn't create a pod file, you're gonna have to install CocoaPods and that's where gem install CocoaPods comes in. But if you've used CocoaPods, you don't need to do that. All right, so next thing we need to do is say vim pod file. And in here, we need to go to the bottom here under pods for NV activity and hit I for insert. And then we can type in or copy and paste this line right here, okay? So the pod NV activity indicator view, I'm gonna paste that in there. And again, link in the description if you wanna copy and paste that. And then now what we can do is hit escape and colon and right quit WQ. Notice the bottom here, I hit escape and then shift colon WQ and then I hit return. And then now when we say cat pod file, you're gonna see that that NV activity indicator view pod is in there. Now it's not gonna work yet until we run pod install, okay? So let's go ahead and say pod install here in our terminal. And then it will install it and you'll see it says analyzing dependencies, installing NV activity indicator view, and it should be done, okay? So it's now installed and we can now use it. Now we can't use it unless we open up the project from the Xcode workspace project, okay? So I'm gonna close the Xcode project, type in LS here. You'll see we have NV activity, Xcode project, and Xcode workspace. I'm gonna open it up saying open space period and you'll see we have these files here. We wanna open it up from Xcode Workspace, so I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Again, Xcode Workspace, it's gonna be that little white one. All right, so it's now open and we have our pod installed. I'm gonna go ahead and go into viewcontroller.swift and I'm gonna change the build device to the iPhone XR and I'm going to recompile the app and see if it compiles all good, all right? Now, while that's happening, I'm gonna say import NV activity indicator view. Now Xcode hasn't picked up on it yet that we've installed it, but it should work, okay? All right, so I'm gonna kill the app and recompile it and it should work just fine. All right, so it's completely normal if you're getting these errors, they'll go away in a second once Xcode realizes what's going on and that we have the dependency installed. Okay, so build succeed, it's just gonna open up a blank app. So now what we need to do is set up this NV indicator view. So I'm gonna say set up NV activity indicator view. And then I'm gonna say file private func set up NV activity indicator view. You could also call this something like start animation, right? So if I wanted to say start animation and then start animation right here, that would work just fine too. So now what we want to do is say let loading is equal to NV activity indicator view. And then we just need to provide it with a frame, a type, a color, and a padding, okay? So frame, I'm just going to say zero. I'm going to use programmatic auto layout. And then for type, I'm going to say dot uh, ball pulse, okay? Then I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to say dot blue. And then the padding, I'm going to put zero. And then this is what I want you to understand here, okay? So I said ball pulse, right? Where did that come from? If we command click into ball pulse and hit show quick help, we're not gonna see much, but if we hit it again and hit jump to definition, we're gonna see all these different items here. We have blank, we got ball pulse, we got grid pulse. These are all the items, okay? All the different types of animations. And if you go to the GitHub repo, you'll see that at the top here, we have them all listed right here in a demo. So ball pulse, let's go read which one that is. Looks like it is somewhere down here, ball pulse. 
Oh, it's the very first one, my bad. <laughs> so it's gonna show us that one, okay? Now, the two I particularly like in here or think look best in an app is 17 and 29, specifically 29. The rest are dope, but sometimes it's not always a great animation for a project in my opinion. But yeah, 17, 29, 18, 24, basically just the less involved but still cool ones, right? It'd be kind of weird seeing some of these in an app. All right, anyway, that doesn't matter. What we're gonna do in here is we are going to say loading.translates auto resize mask and constraints set to false. And somebody commented on my last video and told me that there's another way of activating auto layout constraints, which is actually what I used to do. But ever since I watched Brian Vong's videos, he says, or let's build that up, he says dot is active is set to true when activating a constraint. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So normally what Brian will do is he'll say loading.withanchor.constraint is equal to like 40 dot is active is true, which is how I usually do it now. But before I watched his videos, what I would actually do is I would say, I would do this. I would cut this and I would say NS layout constraint dot activate. And then I'd hit return and provide an array of constraints. So this is how I used to do it. And someone let me know that this is another way of doing it. And it reminded me about how I used to do this. Anyway, we can say nslayoutconstraint.activate and throw these in here. And if you left that comment, go ahead and drop another comment and let me know if that was you. Um, Cause it's a, I, I think this is a better way of doing it sometimes. It, it's really, it doesn't really matter, right? Like both ways are kind of, it's, I guess it's just personal, personal preference. Either way, let's give it a width anchor, a height anchor, and then let's constrain it in the middle. So we'll say loading, dot center y anchor dot constraint is equal to and we'll say view dot center y anchor and then i won't provide a constant and then i will simply write that again except for this time for center x anchor equal to view dot center x anchor no constant and we're good to go let's go ahead and add it to the sub view before doing this all all, all these constraints however or it will crash so we'll say view dot add sub view loading Okay, so now when we compile our app, we should get the loading animation I showed you in the very beginning of the video. All right, and now that it's compiled, you'll see that it didn't actually start, right? And the reason being is because we haven't yet started the animation. So let's go ahead and say loading.startAnimation or start animating, and let's recompile the app and you're gonna see it on the screen now because I called the start animating function. Now, what you might wanna do is stop the animation after a certain amount of time. You'll see it's working now and it looks great. And what you could do is say something like, you could like say, oh, if I could type dispatch Q dot main dot a sync after dispatch time dot now. And there's other ways of doing this and then plus like two seconds. And then you could say loading dot stop animation. Anyway, what I'm saying is uh, if you're doing delays and stuff, normally I wouldn't use a sync after because this is like on the main thread and you might want to use this for something else. But maybe you'd want to use something like perform after delay. Either way, it works for what we're doing. You'll see that it was there for two seconds and then it stopped animating. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that and I'm just going to have it start animating after two seconds and then I'll end the video, okay? Just to show you that the animation is there since it went away so fast. All right, so two seconds, one, two, and you'll see that it's animating, okay? So that's how you use the NV Activity Indicator View in Xcode. I'll leave a link to the CocoaPod in the description below. And if you're interested in animations and building out more custom animations like this, except for not using CocoaPods, uh, feel free to check out my animations course on Udemy, okay? Because I have an animations course on Udemy that I will have a coupon code down below. Looks like it's priced at Where'd I put it? Right there. It's $16.99, but with the uh, coupon code, it's $9.99. So go ahead and check that out in the description. And as always, I'll see you all in the very next video.